section algebra one half lesson 84 we're going to get into some direct hardcore algebra today and we're going to start with what's called the addition rule and i'm going to explain it to you in the context of the first example And it says, use the new format and algebraic addition to solve. And then it says x plus 5 equals 7. Now, I know what's happening in your brain right now, Caleb. I don't even have to see you. I don't even have to be doing this at the same time that you. I know you're looking at this and going, 2. Duh, this is easy. Why am I even trying? Yes, you're right. It is 2. But now I want to show you the format we use for proving that. Because there are going to be problems that you look at that you're not going to be able to just immediately have the answer jump in your head. So you're going to want to know how to figure it out. This is what we do. We use a rule that says we can add or subtract the same number from both sides and the equation will still be in balance. Okay? We always look for the letter first. That's what we want to get by itself. This plus 5 is attached to it and we need to get rid of that. So the opposite of adding is subtracting. So we subtract 5 from both sides. The format I'm using is terribly important. We're going to build on this. It's going to get way more complicated. You want to be as neat and accurate in your work as possible. Follow the way that I do it, and you'll get there. Okay, plus 5 and minus 5 cancel each other out. So we're not in zero. left with just an x over here. Yay, that's what we wanted. Over here, we have 7 minus 5. That's 2. There's the answer that you knew was in your head. And we box it to show that it's the answer. Easy, right? Okay, let's make it a little bit hard. Solve 2x plus 1 half equals 3 fourths. Okay, that one I bet is a little bit harder for you to just do in your head really fast. You can still figure it out, I'm sure. But again, we're going to use our process to make sure we understand the steps, because then you can solve any equation. All right, same thing. We look for our x, and we want to get rid of whatever's attached to it. Well, there's two things attached to it. This one we'll deal with first. I think we've talked about this. This is the thing where you have two friends over and you're closer friends with one than the other. This is your closer friend. So you send the other friend home first. Um, yeah, so we're going to subtract one half. And we're going to do it from both sides. We're left with a 2x here. This cancels to zero. We're good. Now we have to take three fourths and subtract one half. Denominators need to match and they don't. So we're going to change the form of this into two fourths which is much better. And then this will equal 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth. Okay? Again, pay close attention to format and copy my methods when you're doing your own problems. Okay, 2 times 1 fourth, 2 times x equals 1 fourth. Now, my first instinct says, okay, divide by 2. But then when I go over here to divide by 2, I'm making a mess. I don't want to do that. So, as we've noticed with other problems, sometimes when you're trying to undo multiplication, instead of dividing, it helps to multiply by the reciprocal. And that looks way better over here, right? Sometimes it's nice to put that over a 1 so you can see, oh yeah, that cancels. This is way easier to deal with, and we get x equals 1 over 8, which is the final answer. Okay, oh look, my eyes... <laughs> this poor deformed person now has three eyes. Oh my gosh. Drama. Okay? So, this was a two-step kind of a deal. Um, let's do one more. I'm going to flip. Let's do two more. I lied. 84.3. So, Whenever you see the word solve in the instructions for a problem, you know that you're going to get to x equals fill in the blank. Usually it's x, sometimes it's a different letter, but 
when we say solve, we know that we're going to be getting a single value for x. Simplify means make it as neat as you can, but we don't have a value for x in the end. Okay. This time, we don't have any adding or subtracting going on. We just have multiplication, right? And our first instinct is to say, okay, let's divide by 3. Is that going to work? Yeah, that should be fine. We don't have to resort to a reciprocal here. Although we could, and it would work. But we can use straight division because we don't have any fractions. This cancels. X equals, okay, I do the number first. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Two negatives go together to make a positive. It's not necessary to show the positive sign, but sometimes I think it's helpful. Whatever your brain likes. Okay, so we can divide by negative numbers. And then example 84.4. Got, oh, now, now we're just bumping it up here. Three, minus 3x three plus 4 equals 10. Again, once we throw in negative numbers, I bet that number, that answer, that value for x, I bet that number could possibly be negative. Well, it is the same first problem we had. Um, but that's okay. We get your two friends over. That's your best friend. He gets to stay a little longer. This guy, I'm sorry, go home. So we do the opposite. We subtract 4. The first chunk stays the same. 10 minus 4 is 6. Okay, time for the best friend to go home. We're going to divide. We don't have any fractions in this problem, so we don't have to resort to reciprocal. This cancels. X equals 6 divided by 3 is 2, and we only have one negative, so we know our answer is negative. Ta-da! Okay, that is like good, solid algebra. I am so ready, Caleb, for you to be doing something harder. Honestly, this whole book, I just feel like is so... I don't want to say it's easy for you because I don't want to suggest that you're not working hard, but the working in this year, that is going to accelerate. The pace is going to be a little bit faster and we're going to go a little deeper and I'm ready for you to do that. Okay. Um, the last part of this is something called properties of equality. And I have to tell you, these are important, but this used to drive me crazy when I was a student because I just, it seemed so obvious what they were saying and I could not imagine why we're making such a big deal out of it. This is on page 284, 264, sorry. If you've got your book in front of you, grab it and flip to that. If not, look later, I'll show you in my book now. What I want you to notice are these four lines right here in this box on page 284. Okay, it says, oh, it's hard to read. Let me just copy them and talk about them briefly. But they're right there in your book in that box. Okay, the first one is called the addition property of equality. If A equals B, these are all going to be ifs and then, so let's just set the words up. If A equals B, then A plus C equals B plus C. Okay, so if two things are equal, you can add the same thing to both of them and they'll still be equal. If you have two things that are the same, you can subtract the same number and they'll still be the same. Get the pattern. If you start with two numbers, you can multiply by the same number and they'll still be the same. And ready for the division property? You got it. You can divide them by the same numbers if C is not zero because then the kingdom explodes. These are called the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties of equality. We use them in algebra all the time. We just have to make sure that we don't blow up the universe with that zero situation. All right, and we use these in algebra all the time. And there is a question that says, 
which property of equality do we use in solving x minus 4 equals 9? Okay, well, how do we solve that? We want to add 4 to both sides, right? So that, that's our thing. Which, which one of these four rules makes it okay for us to do that? Well, we're adding, so it's, it's the addition property. That's all they want to hear. Addition property of equality. Okay, all these fancy words are in your book on, I'll write it again, page 264. Okay, so just look at that chart as you're doing any problems like that, and it'll be easy. Okay, now I'm done. Lesson 84. Thanks, Caleb.